Good, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Tom, Tom Rowell, Lee Morgan. Uh, Brent resisted saying old officials. He just said uh, long time officials, but I think we qualify as old also. But uh, we're here today to talk about crew dynamics. Uh, both Lee and I have uh, been in the business a long time and, and we've got to meet a lot of great officials. And guys like uh, Alex Kemp and Sean Smith and Jeff Stravinsky, who came out of our areas, uh, are great officials and they share a couple of uh, common traits. And what we're going to try to do today is share some of those traits with you guys uh, that have made them successful and made our, some of our local crews uh, deem successful. Um, a, a, good, uh, a good key for a successful crew uh, doesn't start during the season. It starts in the preseason. And we're going to talk, we're going to break down the preseason, in season things you can do, and postseason in order to make you uh, a better crew. Uh, completely. Lee, anything? No. Okay, let's get started. Let's go to uh, preseason. And oh, am I, I'm doing that. I'm sorry. Forward. Okay, preseason. And uh, I'm really not that stupid, honest. Uh, number one thing for uh, a successful crew is evaluation. And you have to be able to look at your crew honestly and, and really evaluation starts with yourself. Uh, it may be a situation where your crew has uh, some people that have been injured or have health issues um, or are maybe not in the right position. And so it's important for you uh, to start off the preseason with a, a clear evaluation of personnel and position. Lee? I agree. If you're not in the right position to begin with, you, you set yourself up to fail. And remember that our every every call that we make, every uh, whether we make a good call or miss a good call, is a reflection not only on our crew but our industry as a whole. Number two, uh, it's good to have uh, a crew meeting and have a common sense of goals, what you want your crew to achieve. Um, and in a philosophy, a common philosophy. We have uh, for our crew, and I knew I messed it up. Um, and, and most all this stuff's available to you uh, through the association. Uh, but this, we have a, a set of uh, officiating philosophies. You know, we call it Philosophy 101. And all this stuff will be available to you. If you can't find it, uh, contact Lee or myself and, and we can. I'll get it to you. But it's really good to have a common philosophy uh, on things like catch, no catch, what's a hold, what isn't a hold, uh, OPI versus DPI, uh, those sort of things there that uh, provides consistency uh, for the crew from side to side and from top to bottom. The other thing is a real good um, uh, Real good commitment to getting into the rules and mechanics of, of our association of the uh, National Federation and, and in particular the MHSAA. Uh, this year is specifically we have very few rule, rule changes, although one, the one rule change we have is, is a pretty dynamic change, but the mechanics of switching sides for our line of scrimmage people is going to be crucial. Uh, and it's going to be crucial again for to reach uh, uh, consistency from side to side. It's going to be very, very important for uh, each crew to have uh, uh, the same uh, philosophy from side to side. We, you, we had uh, the TBC and, and uh, uh, had a really good, Steve came and did a really good presentation on the, on the mechanics of that. Oh, for sure. And that'll be the whole thing that we're trying to strive is the message has to be the same from the first snap in the first quarter to the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, how you deal with it. the coaches are very aware. And in our meeting in February, or excuse me, in June, we brought coaches in and asked them that exact question. You know, what can we do? What do you need? And they're all about the communication and they're very highly aware of the switch that's coming. They are looking forward to it. I, the coaches said, they can't wait to be able one day get their question asked in person, 
but they're interested to see how that all works and they're very, very excited about that change. I think they're probably more excited than the officials are about the change. It's actually a little scary for officials. Uh, this is something brand new for us, although it's been in around for a long time. The NCAA just started a few years ago and the NFL has had it for a while. And it's something that's positive for the crews, it's positive for the game, and uh, you're going to need a commitment from your crew, for the dynamics of your crew, to have your guys in the book. Uh, they have a very good uh, ruling on it, or uh, printing of it in the uh, Newman uh, Mechanics Manual. And so we're going to need a commitment from the guys to get, not only get in the rule book, but again, the Mechanics Manual this year. Another big tool is huddle for preseason. Uh, for those we're fortunate in our area that our coaches and uh, schools are very positive in getting us to their huddle film. And we're able to, the huddle films come to one central place. I don't know how your association does it. Uh, some associations have each official ask for their film. And it really gets uh, over uh, overboard, overloaded for the uh, school administration to do that. It's better to have a single point, in my opinion, it's better to have a single point for those films to come to, and then they go out to the, um, to the particular crews. Huddle is a, a great tool, and if you're not utilizing it, uh, you're missing out. And again, it affects your crew dynamics. Lee, anything? No. Testing. Uh, actually, the Federation has a test every year. The MHSA has a test every year. But we do a thing within our crew uh, where uh, on a weekly or semi-weekly uh, basis, well, well, we'll bring up mechanics uh, and rinse that review is gonna look like crap, so I'm not gonna do it anymore. Uh, we bring up uh, test uh, within, our, within our group uh, so that uh, we may test uh, the, the wing guys uh, on uh, chain mechanics, uh, measurement mechanics, uh, may test, test the back judge on uh, clock management. And so, I mean, there's just lots of different things you can do during the year to make sure that your guys stay engaged. And as a crew, you want to be engaged completely. Camps and meetings. Unfortunately, our, the number of camps that we've been able to have have really gone down with the pandemic and, and all the other issues that have happened. Uh, the number of camps, especially for new officials, have gone down. Uh, the Northern Sports Officials Association still has a camp uh, August 8th, I think it is. And um, there's a few other camps around. But really, the, the responsibility for training has fallen back, not just within the, within the crew itself, but within your association. And some associations have been really, really good about putting together training programs uh, for their existing officials and for new officials. It's important, it's a really important thing that uh, you attend the meetings uh, that the association puts together. And if you have questions, ask. There's lots of information out there, uh, lots of resources for answers to those questions that you might not be getting uh, from your association. Lee, anything you want to no, add on that? You're doing great. Uh, Preseason. This is another really, really good time to check your equipment. Uh, do you need to update your shoes? Do you need to update your whistles, uh, your, your uh, down markers, uh, er everything? It's a good time of year to go ahead and go through your equipment so that when your crew, as a crew, steps out on the field, uh, they look 100%. So that's just some of the things preseason that we can do uh, as far as. Um, making our crew um, more effective. Uh, one of the things that we do, and I know a lot of uh, crews end up doing this, is we have a preseason pre meeting, and we'll talk about these things uh, within our crew itself, uh, uh, aside from an association meeting. But it's really important to have to start those open lines of communication, and making sure you're gonna get commitments for the guys to get into the rule books and the mechanics uh, manual. The mechanics manual is really, it's, about 180 pages, I think, but maybe not that many, but it's a lot. And uh, there's a lot of changes and we need to know. When I look at huddle film, I can tell guys who haven't been in the mechanics manual. 
uh, uh, guys that stick out. And it's not right for the game, it's not right for the kids, it's not right for the rest of your crew. But that's what a good uh, preseason meeting within your crew is, is will help uh, solve some of those problems. Lee, anything on those parts? No, you hit the nail on the head. It's all about work in the preseason, boys. We talked about, can I skip through this stuff now? Sure. One of the things, uh, the, are they seeing the same thing I am? One of the things at the bottom there, it says, have we built a system for new officials? Uh, in the last year, especially, we've lost, uh, in our, I know in our, out of our association, we lost 62 varsity officials. So we had to bring new officials on. And do you have a program within your crew, within your association, to make sure that those guys are number one, comfortable, number two, uh, in uh, training, uh, getting in the rules and the manual, and uh, number three, are, are the, you're providing the training to make them uh, going to make them a part of the crew uh, and a better official. Really important to have a system for new officials. Uh, goals. We talked about goals, having a philosophy. But these philosophy issues they may sound small to you, but uh, a catch, no catch, hold, handling, DPI, OPI, train wrecks versus fender benders. These are really going to be important this year because we're, we're switching the sides on the change and the coaches are going to want to see uh, consistency from side to side. And uh, rules, again, the uh, mechanics manual is just huge and it really needs to be uh, gone through. I guess learn the language to communicate. When you're talking to the coaches uh, about how the hold is, know that it's a it's a grasp and restrict. It's a takedown hold. Know the language because that's the language they're used to. If we if we learn to communicate with the coaches in the language that they're familiar with, uh, it makes that uh, lines of communication a, a lot better. Huddle we talked about huddle. Uh, we're able to uh, get films from last year. Uh, huddle will keep films for I think three years. So yeah, when you know uh, early on, hopefully you'll have your uh, your games and you'll be able to tell, uh, get into the huddle and, and make that contact in order to see the kind of uh, games that you're going to be uh, having. Lots of training material available. Uh, again, mechanics manual. If, oops, there we go. It's huge. Uh, we really need to get into that. But we have things like uh, uh, officiate uh, by topic, uh, the official manual, the rule book. We have lots of training. And you have people within your association with it that you can reach out to and answer uh, questions that you need to have answered. Has anybody got any questions so far? No. Over here. Your question is in regards to flipping officials. What page is it in the manual? It's not been updated yet. It hasn't uh, been published yet. Uh, Brent has, uh, number one, we have a uh, PDF that um, Steve Kamen has put together that we can get out to you. But uh, Brent is updating the mechanics for that uh, as we speak, and it will be in the manual. And uh, I'm assuming that he's going to send an email out to uh, let everybody know when those mechanics have been updated for that switch. Great question, by the way. Testing we talked about. Well, if our, if our association does not have huddle with them, how do we get them to come in? That's, a, that's also a great question. Huddle is not cheap. Uh, what we've done, uh, we've been able to go together with several different associations and share the cost. You might check with your association and see if that's an avenue for you guys to uh, get involved with uh, for your association to uh, maybe partner up with someone that already has huddle. Um, there's a couple of different ways if you want to bite the bullet and, and pay the bill. I think it's around $800 um, per sport. Per sport, yeah. So uh, again, huddle's not uh, cheap, but it is a tool that is very, very valuable to your association. Uh, again, I would, if I were part of an association, I would look into sharing the cost with another association. That's worked for us. Any other? Okay. 
cancer meetings, we talked about all this stuff. Uh, check your equipment. All right, now we're going to go to in season, the things that we can do uh, in season. You just personally this, that will be the same thing. You're going to get all that detail that you guys put in on those. Uh, yeah, and I realized that after. Um, so, in season, uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about are pre game discussions and mechanics changes, uh, communications. Uh, some crews use uh, official to official communications. Uh, they're really a good tool used right. Uh, signals, we, uh, besides the approved signals, we have some signals within our crew that we use and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, it's not going to happen. Meetings, uh, again, we talked about meetings for in season. Uh, sub varsity work, uh, we're gonna talk about that. Uh, huddle, again, uh, I'm a believer in huddle, as you can tell, and equipment, know the tools that you have. So first, uh, let's talk about communications. Uh, communications start really with contacting the school. Uh, before we go to a game, on Monday, before we go to a game, uh, I'll send a letter out, and I apologize for that. a letter out similar to this uh, and basically it, it, I'll send a letter to both ADs for both schools uh, letting them know that we're a seven person team uh, we will arrive in two or three vehicles whichever it might be that week uh, uh, ask for a particular place to park ask if there's somebody that's going to meet us um, and escort us to the field at halftime and then after the game uh, we we come mostly dressed so we do not need locker rooms uh, and we'll let the, uh, the site know that uh, we'll be coming um, addressed and we will not need a locker room. We also, we arrive, we try to arrive 90 minutes early. Uh, we tell them what time we do in the, uh, the kickoff, it's 20 minutes before. Again, this is now in the manual that they would like to kick off 20 minutes beforehand. Uh, we ask them if there's any special events we should be aware of, any special memorizations. Uh, parents night or team night, whatever it might be, anything that we should be aware of. And we also send them a copy of the ratings card. Uh, and I know you've all seen this, but again, each, each school will get a copy of that ratings card. So, and actually coaches like this because they have an idea of which crew they're working with uh, that week. Uh, we also would uh, let them know that we'd like to see the chain crew and the clock operator before the game. And, uh, and again, uh, we just tell them that we're proud to be working that contest. Uh, we anticipate a great contest. Again, that stuff's available to you. Any of the stuff that I show you is available to you. I can get it to you. And a lot of the stuff that I talked about in that letter is in the uh, manual with uh, the coaches meeting. Coaches meeting to change this year because it used to be just you know, seven man. The uh, U and the R would go and meet with the coaches. This year they went to line of scrimmage guys also to meet with the coaches when the U and the R meet with coaches. Uh, communication, we uh, every week I get confirmation from my crew members uh, that we're gonna be there, that there's no issues, health issues, work issues, whatever it might be. It's really important that uh, you know ahead of time uh, if you're gonna have any situations that need to be addressed by the assigner. Uh, using a radio. Uh, again, the uh, official to official radio is a great tool. You have some guys that like to talk too much. Um, and so it's, gonna, it's, it's a, training, a training thing. Uh, you're gonna have to make sure it's used as a tool and not as a, a social gathering. So that's it on communications. Signals, uh, the signals are in the manual. They're in the rule book. Uh, and again, this is, this is available for everybody. These are the approved uh, signals. And uh, we would like everybody on our crew to know what the uh, approved signals are. We have a signal for uh, co uh, teams that are going to use the um, swinging gate or use the numbering exception rules. And the umpire and I, and actually, when the umpire raises his hand to let us know that. Uh, we got the numbering situation. That really puts everybody on uh, alert to know that their keys are the correct keys that they're looking at. 
important. Uh, again, some crews have developed uh, special signals. Did I do that? So make sure you commit, make sure your crew is committed to using the tools properly. Uh, these signals, uh, as I watch film, I hardly. Uh, one of the things that's a pet peeve with me is when we get to the less than five, less than five for first down, uh, and we have crews regularly not using that mechanic and it's a great mechanic to use. Uh, also we have on fourth down, it's gonna be fourth down, we're gonna have a dead clock on the next play. We have crews that are still not using this, this uh, uh, tool. And so that we know that no matter what happens on the next play, we're gonna have a dead clock, whether it's a first down, a change of possession, whatever it might be, we're gonna have a dead clock and react uh, accordingly. The question is, can you provide your email address to hand out for the handouts, you will actually send those out. We'll scan them in and send them out to all officials. Uh, Brent's just uh, one of the questions was, uh, can we can you get my email address? Obviously, you can get it online at the at the website. But Brent said that everything that uh, we talk about in this presentation is going to be uh, emailed out to everybody, uh, and it'll be available either through email or PDF or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, all that stuff will be available to you guys. Uh, in season meetings, it's important to support your local association by attending the meetings. When you have 200 members in a, uh, a local association and you have 20 guys show up for a meeting, it's hard to provide the, the commitment uh, and communication and consistency that your association, that the teams in your area deserve. Um, so you really need to get out and support your local association. And if your association is not providing the tools that you need in order to become a successful crew, uh, then you know get with the get with the leadership in that association and, and demand more. Uh, it's up to you guys to demand more from your association. We I know your association does a really good uh, job on that uh, participation wise. But what have you done to make sure that they? Uh, are attending the meetings. Well, you just keep throwing them and give them all the opportunities because everybody's got different things in their life that have priority. We just keep trying to bombard them with every opportunity they can to train, whether it's through video, whether it's through in-person, anything we can. You know, we don't get disappointed when our numbers aren't there because the people that are there, we're there to teach them. And then we'll just continue to keep giving them the opportunity. As an assigner, it's frustrating with 700 people on staff to get one voice, but we'll go into that a little later. But remember that these meetings are really there to provide a, a foundation for communication, consistency, and commitment by all the crews. So that no matter what crew shows up at Bentley, that coach knows that he's going to get that consistency because we've attended the association meetings and all the meetings that are available. Sub varsity. Uh, I am a real believer that you should use your sub varsity games as a tool. And that tool is to get into different positions. Uh, guys that say they worked a, a referee their whole life or an umpire their whole life, and that's all they're going to do, then they have tunnel vision and they're not seeing the game. I, I, nothing I like more than getting into different positions and getting a feel for what that guy has to go through, especially with the sign lines with coaches and what have you. Remember that it's really important in sub varsity because you're taking the probably the least experienced player with the least experienced coaches and the least experienced officials and not expecting it to go to heck on you. I watch my language, I'm pretty good, aren't I? <laughs> but uh, that's why it's really important for us to get in those other positions and, and see what they're, what they're dealing with. Working and again, working different positions will help you improve your improve your communication, your consistency, and you know show a commitment to the sport. You learn the mechanics of all the positions, not just the one that you're working. Huddle, I love huddle. Um, I remember when a young man came into our association and introduced us to huddle. Our old timers just hated it, but now everybody's learned that huddle it can be a tool. It can be a valuable tool every position to get that consistency from week to week, from side to side, from top to bottom. Uh, communicate your thoughts. Uh, our crew is uh, sometimes vicious, but we uh, 
all of our guys look at the film and if we see something that's wrong, we're not afraid to communicate within the crew what we've done wrong. And in fact, uh, I've got film, game films that I've showed in meetings where we've done something wrong and use it as a learning tool and uh, not be afraid to communicate so that we, again, we uh, improve our crew's consistency, improve our association's consistency, improve our, our community's consistency. Uh, having consistency with your whistle, flag, and bag mechanics. Um, people spend a lot of money on their whistle, their flag, and the bag, and they don't know how to use the doggone things. Uh, there's a very good specific purposes for those tools, and they're in the manual. And again, reach out to somebody. We, we ought to know when we're supposed to throw a bag, when we're not supposed to throw a bag, when we're supposed to pull a flag. Uh, just because we uh, see a penalty doesn't mean we're going to necessarily throw a flag on it. Some things may be a talk to. Again, it's, those are the kind of things that we want to work on for consistency within the crew. Do you want anything? add anything? No, okay. you're good. Uh, indicator bands for the down, a chain clip, a game card. Uh, this, is, this is an example of a game card that I print out for, for myself. But we have lots of different kinds of game cards. And when you get done at the end of the game, there's more. That game card ought to have some information on it. Everybody, everybody should have timeouts marked on their, their game card. Uh, the new manual asks us to keep a record of who threw a penalty and what the penalty was. We're going to start doing that this year. In the past, we've had one guy responsible for recording our penalties so that we can review them. Now we're going to go with a manual and it has certain people responsible for, for recording the penalties. Our game card uh, and with rookies, uh, sub varsity especially, uh, about halfway through the game, I'll say, let's, let's look at your cards. Let's see what you've been doing. And everybody should have uh, kept track of the timeouts and that sort of stuff there. Game cards are a really important tool. And again, I jumped ahead of myself, but game cards are important for everybody. Uh, when we do the uh, coaches meeting, a uh, game card is going to tell us if our quarterback's right-handed or left-handed, our kickers are right-handed or left-handed. Uh, it gives us a lot of information that we need to know are in the toss, etc. cetera. Uh, so those game cards, uh, I don't care if you write it on a paper sack, it doesn't have to be a regular form, but keep track of that important information. That brings us to postseason. Um, postseason is, is a whole lot like preseason. We're, again, we're going to evaluate personnel. Uh, we're going to evaluate our season, and it's really critical for you to be honest uh, in your communication, in your consistency, have an issue with, with an official who hasn't made that effort, hasn't made that commitment, then there really needs to be something that needs to be addressed. Uh, health issues, um, we got too many old farts. I'm going to tell you that right now. We need to get a lot more young guys. But health issues are uh, knee operations and shoulder operations. And, and uh, we just need to make sure that uh, we evaluate our crew as honestly as possible. Uh, this year, uh, I'm going to move from uh, my normal R position, and we're going to put a younger guy in that position, and I'm going to move to a, a, a wing position, which I've done in the past on other crews. But uh, it's for me, it was better for our crew to have a, a younger guy in that R position. And it's, it may, it's better for, again, it's better for our association to start seeing some younger guys in those uh, positions, and it's better for the uh, for our community, officiating community as a whole. We need to, along with recruiting, we need to be training young guys in those uh, other positions. Uh, review, review games, mechanics, play situations. Um, we had a situation with our crew, and, and I'll use our crew because I don't, I'm not embarrassed to do it, where we was hurrying through penalties, and penalty enforcement. We know what it is, we're gonna do it, we're gonna walk it off, and we needed to slow down slow down on our penalty enforcement. But that was something that we reviewed and we talked about openly. And that line of communication within your crew is so important to keep that consistency uh, within the crew. As well as preseason meetings, we have a post-season meeting with our crew. Uh, usually it's uh, a little 
may have uh, included an adult beverage or two, uh, but uh, we try and, and get thoughts and ideas that will help our crew uh, improve and, and be more consistent. Anything there? And again, huddle, huddle, huddle. You, you obviously know that I believe in huddle, and, and it's a great tool. Are there questions there that we haven't answered? Okay, good deal. Um, huddle is just a huge tool. Uh, it helps you with mechanics. It helps you with rules knowledge. It helps you with penalty enforcement. Uh, it helps you with quizzing uh, within your crew, and uh, for. Your crew dynamics, it's really, really important for you to get used to using auto and make it a part of your uh, tool. Uh, I think you probably heard three words consistently through this whole uh, presentation. And those three, again, guys like Bill Lamagne, Sean Smith, Alex Kemp, uh, Jeff Stravinsky, uh, guys that we all know and uh, have. Uh, Appreciate what they do for the game. They share these one these common goals: communication, communication amongst your crew, communication with your assigner, communications within your association with administration, uh, communication with the coaches, and communication with the kids. Lots of times when coaches say they see something, it's not them seeing it from the sidelines. It's somebody up in the box that has a really good view. And so when a coach asks you to look for something. Agree to do it. Just do it because nine times out of ten, they may be right, and it's important for us to keep those lines of communications. If a if a kid tells you, "Hey, he's holding me," who who's holding you? How's he doing it? And then watch him. You know, these kids uh, they're out there to be successful, and uh, we can help them be successful by us being successful also. Consistency, communication, consistency, crew mechanics, philosophies. That leads to good crew mechanics, make your calls, make good judgment for your rule uh, application. Uh, philosophy, again, uh, you've got to have the same philosophy. Your crew has to see, the, hopefully see the same, play the same way. Just see everything you call, but don't call everything you see. Uh, time, score, situation may have an effect on it. Those are all kind of common philosophies within a crew that you need to have uh, your crew become buy-in to and commitment. Uh, we can talk until we're blue and faded. We can talk till I have hair on my head, which was going to be a long time. But unless you guys and your crews make the commitment to get in the rule books, to get in the mechanics manual, the mechanics manual, the mechanics manual, the mechanics manual, and share your enthusiasm for the game, for the sport, uh, with other people. Uh, that helps with the recruitment, obviously. But if the players and the coaches know that you are sincere in your love for the game and in your um, enthusiasm for knowing the rules and knowing the mechanics and being getting the right angles, uh, that'll that'll be passed on to them. Lee, you all set? Have a great season. I'm going to let Lee in here now. I've uh, I think I've taken. Large majority You're of the okay, Tom. You're fine. You, guys, when we're, we're talking about keys to a, a successful crew, and Tom's laid out just a beautiful outline for it, take a look when you look at your appearance. We get one chance to make a first impression. I have developed with the Tri Valley Conference up in the Saginaw Bay City area a great group of coaches that have shared with me their thoughts on a weekly basis on what they expect, what they need. Their first thing is what you look like walking out on the field. If you don't look like a unit, they're skeptical. So you take a look at that. Get into your contest management. Are we going to have a flow? Like Tom says, do we treat all plays the same? Do we share that common philosophy about what's in front of us and how we rule on it? Are our penalty enforcements crisp, clean? Everything is all about appearance. And this is where the video that Tom's always preaching about helps. This is where we use the O2O, the official official communications, to a really high level. Coaches want that information. They need that. Give me the number. Give me the play. What do you have? Especially if it's on the opposite side of the field. All right. If I'm in the referee position with the earpiece connected to everybody, we come in, the, the official calls the ball. 
My umpire's got the information. Before I step out of that huddle, we know what we've done. We know what we're going to do. So before I relay that to the press box, it's a simple tap of the mic, explain the penalty, the enforcement spot, and what we're going to do and how we're going to enforce it. This allows my crew to go, yep, that's good. Or check, well, wait a minute, that's not right. Before I turn to the press box and make the signal, we've already got that done. So the referee can turn around, make that call, present it to the people in the crowd. And if he does have the luxury of being mic'd up to the general public, it's even better because you can explain everything you need quietly and understandably to everybody in the crowd and they'll go, okay, all right, I'm good. Coaches here. Then your wings have already heard that. They've shared the information with their coaches, and then we move on. There's no delay. Everything is smooth. Like Tom said, we got away from rushing through it because we know what we're doing. We just every penalty is enforced with the same pace, the same speed. Everything looks the same. Consistency. Now, we've been really trying to build on it, and I'm a big proponent of one voice. We talked about my staff meeting we had last month. I have 355 football members on staff. We didn't get that many into meeting. Trying to build one voice for those people is a tall challenge. But if you go through everything that Towns did, now I'm gonna to try to go a little bit deeper on how we really get into getting one voice. 10 years ago, we started with a simple question we asked everybody in the group. What bar are we going to tonight? With what used to be 25 years ago, 30 years ago, it would be, well, where are we stopping for a soda and a burger after the game? Well, that now became how high are we going to challenge ourselves to reach the lofty levels that our preseason goals, which you should have, are trying to attain. Personally, I want a goal I can never attain. That means if I attain my goal, I've quit learning and I've quit trying to be a better official. That can never happen. So set that bar at a level that you can reward your success, but that you never stop trying to get to the next level. If you look at the guys that are working at the higher level above us, they always say they've got 5% different that they do. We'll try to find what your 5% could be. What can I do even better to make me a better official on Thursday, Friday, Saturday night? Because we're there to work in conjunction with the coaches to make sure the student athlete has the best experience they can have for nine, 10, 11, 12, how many weeks they run through. We're gonna build one voice. What it takes is a commitment. Tom's used that word many times. One voice means five guys, same philosophy, same goal. I want one voice on 355 guys on staff. How do I con conduct that? We watch the video, we get the tape, we get feedback. Guys that follow the plan, embrace into what we're trying to teach them, stay on staff. If not, I look elsewhere. I have that ability as a conference assigner to hire who fits the goal that our conference is trying to achieve. We're trying to spread that out now. We've been training for probably 20 years together now, Tom trying to just continue to learn. What we train now, we didn't do 20 years ago. We taught them how to put their hand up. We were so stuck on the mechanics. Now, if the mechanics are clean, it's how does the game flow? Do I get 20 calls on Friday night or Saturday morning, or do I get one? Now I get one, and it's usually a rules interpretation. Most of the time, the guys will get most of it right, and they'll realize, uh oh, we got that wrong. And you know what? The official will call me right after the game and go, I kicked that call. So when the coach calls, we know we got it wrong and we, we're going to learn from it. That's all I can ask. We make mistakes. We're not perfect. We get things wrong. And usually most of the calls are like, no, I'm okay with how they did it. It's just they didn't want to talk to me. They didn't explain it to me. I didn't get a grasp of what they were after. And that's all what we're about is getting them the information. And you can't go to the sideline every play and go, that's what I saw, that's just it. You gotta give them what you saw. Like Tom said, we use the terminology. We hit the keys. Is it a grab and restrict? Is it anything that they can go, okay, you know, we teach the buckets. What what bucket can I throw the flag in for DPI or OPR? All these little things, we just constantly use the language. 
I've had many guys in these kind of trainings where I'll go DPI and OPI, stop me and ask a question. Can you stop using the acronyms? What is DPI? And I, you know, the first time I chuckled like Tom's doing, like, you don't understand defensive pass interference. Are you into are you into it any kind of study where that becomes just something we roll through? What is your crew doing? Are you understanding all that? The biggest thing is your crew is every time we try to give you building blocks, is your crew accepting of the building blocks? You know, we base everything on our crew is, especially the newer guys, we give them the foundation. As the guy gets along, we put another two or three blocks on, the tower gets a little bigger, the building's a little stronger. It's a little more stable, it understands everything. Every year we try to continue to add things to each of our games and we share what we have. Sharing the wealth that we've learned, like Tom has mentioned, all the great people that have taught us through the years that still teach us, that we can still call and bounce ideas off of, that call us to ask our opinion, how do you handle this, how do you do that? It's always an open end from a designer standpoint, from a, an MHSDA trainer standpoint, we've been doing this a long time. Reach out, it's a simple thing, it's a question, it's an email. Hey Lee, here's what we got, what do you think? Real easy, always welcome to do that. And as I'm healing from a, an injury, I got a little more time on Friday nights to uh, sadly to uh, get that done. Sharing our wealth is, I think, one of the things that veteran officials have the hardest time doing. Is I'm planning for the guy that takes over for me, filling the next thing. I'm trying to whether I'm at my work place understanding that at my age I'm not going to do this forever everything that I have been taught in 35 years of doing this it's going to be 40 as an official I am trying to give back to anybody if you got guys in your crew that are unwilling to share the positive the negative what we've learned what we've made mistakes we've made how we've had to what have we done to do all that if they can't share that think about your crew dynamic there's nothing wrong with the change in crews. Not speaking for Tom, I've been doing this. I probably have had 25 different crew members and I've worked five different positions. Love working on the line of scrimmage. Like Tom said, he's coming out of the middle. I went to the middle because that was going to make our crew stronger. And my strength is still in communication with our staff, communication with all my coaches, I built that. That's a lot of years of building it, but that's how I stay strong. And now it's more a learning tool for my coaches and my officials so that we open that three up. Once again, the goal is still the kids. So now we're building that crew. You notice that uh, Tom uses it, I use it. We're talking about our crew. What do we never say? The pronoun, not my crew. Four. It's never my crew. My crew does this, my crew does that. Yes, with 40, 80 years probably between us combined, we could probably say it's our crew. No, no, I might be the crew leader. I might be the guy that handles some of the things, but we take our crew, it's our crew. We live and die, we are as good as our weakest link. And our, our goal is to make our weakest link our strongest link. How do we do that? We share, we talk about calls. Do we trust our opponent? Uh, excuse me, our opponent. Our win I worked on the wing. Mm -hmm. Trust my wing guy for so long that I know he's going to make the same call I am. If there's a call in the game that I'm, I question or my mind goes, what are you looking about? You know, where are you at? That's, that's a post-game call. What did you see on that? It isn't, I got that call wrong, or well, how could you do that? Because I'm going to come back to you. Are you watching and doing your job? Are you more worried about me? If you've got crew members that are more worried about you making a mistake instead of doing what they need to do, once again, that goes back into your pregame. It gets into your early season. What are you looking at? How do you handle that? Not every crew gets along every single game. Not every crew gets along every single play. How do we get to the point where we can A, accept a mistake, B, accept somebody else's interpretation of it, because most of the time for years we taught basketball in a three-man system that when you step out of your zone to make a call, 90% of the time you're wrong. So 
if you haven't built a trust in five guys or a seven man crew, a seven person crew, that's the first thing you've got to do. There are skill building techniques about how to trust somebody. You can't check your ego. Now I'm the first to admit there's a lot of alpha dogs on the football field. But if five can't become one, then you, you got to work through that. Because like I said, this whole thing is about one voice, consistent voice. I'm trying to spread that out amongst 344 guys. You understand the challenge. We have 25 year olds, we have 70 year olds. Different training, you know, keep giving them all everything we can. Share their input. T seek advice from the, from the veteran people. They like to think that they're empowered. Give them a voice. Let them become part of the solution and not the problem. The, the whole thing with any kind of dynamics with working with people is it's a unit. It's a team. It's a voice. And in order to get people to buy in, to understand what I might be as a personal assigner is doing, it's all about empowering them to join me, to understand where we're coming from. It's not something Lee is making up. It's not something Tom is making up. It's what we've been given as a tool through our life that we are trying to share and get back up. What happens if we stop evolving as an official? Everybody understands. And in how many years, there's probably guys that worked when it was still three, three person mechanics, four person mechanics, five person mechanics, seven person mechanics. Red flags. Yes. <laughs> All the changes, understand that one, we always say change is inevitable. And now we're gonna be faced with probably the most upsetting change to a 35 year veteran wing official is to understand the subtle differences between being a head linesman and being a line guy. Yes, it's still a line of scrimmage official, but your keys are different. Your pre-snap keys are different. Your keys at the beginning of the play are different. You hold, read, react, and then it's football. Whether you're primary on the ball or you're soft spotting, every one of these things comes together. But if you've stopped evolving, and I think it's a great thing because I've had the luxury of working at levels where I know I've been on both sides. It's a great thing. One, I get to go share the other sideline. I get to hear what those guys are giving. I get to get in, have the coach get in my ear and go, you know, Lee, you ruled this in the first half. What'd you get the second half? Is that in the same play? Well, here's why I saw it the same way. Here's why I didn't see it the same way. You're, you're able to give that simple communication with a coach who might be right in your ear, and it's really easy. So then if you have the official to official stuff, and now the play happens on the other side, and he's like, can you ask him a question? If I've got a second, bang, I'm on the thing. What do you got? And I, all, I'm hearing it. I can say, here's what he's got. You know, we'll get more information for you and a dead ball, a timeout, anything. But if you can give them an answer, get them going and get the play moving again, we've solved a lot of our issues about keeping coaches aware. And like Tom alluded to, you know, the eye in the sky sees things a lot different than a five foot eight inch head linesman with 22 kids crossing in front of him on every single play. But, you know, today I'm not here to teach you every key that we need to do. It's to just know where to get the flow is and get all five of you working as a unit. Leaders teach, and that, that's probably difficult to say because most leaders want to dictate, but a true leader teaches. To teach someone, it means you're willing to share everything you have, everything you have to put that guy in your spot. And that's a self-reflective moment. If you're, if, as an official, if we're not getting ready, you know, we're, we're going to be dinosaurs quickly. That next group of young kids with everything that's in front of them, we need to foster people that can understand how it is in our society today to communicate. You know, we're electronic, we're Facebook, we're social media. It's still not a one-on-one -on -one coach. Here's what I saw. Like, I think that was the worst call I've ever seen in your life. Here's what I got explain it understand the rule now if you try to fake your way through that and that was what one of our speakers talked at the staff meeting coaches understand the rule as well as you do most of them 
They understand what they're after. They understand the play. Our veterans need to teach. You need to take that guy under your wing. Whether it's a phone call, or you call Tom. Tom, I think I keep this rule. I know Tom. He's going to pick up the phone. He might even ship you a video clip or two. Here's the same kind of play as this, what you saw. If you get that video, we can you share it amongst us. Brent's been really good about that. We, we get plays, we get ideas, we get this, we get that. We work through everything. So you just try to evolve. You try to teach. If you're not a teacher, then be a supporter. Get somebody on your crew that shares. And I know every one of you has a nugget or building block to add to everybody on your crew. How do you do it? You have to do it professionally. You have to build them up. The biggest thing, you can compliment them, you can tear them down, and you leave them with something positive. It's the whole thing is about skill building. Give them what they do well. Give them a few things that, in your opinion, and be ready, you could hear that right back to you. Here's the things, Leah, I don't like what you do. Great. That's how I get better. That's all about what we're at. So, any questions popping up yet, Brent? How are we doing? We're good? But you can ask anything. Okay, let's do it. Anybody got anything before we wrap this up today about about anything that Tom and I have talked about? Oh, I can't believe it. Nobody. <laughs> wow, either we really nailed it or they all went to sleep. No, they didn't go to sleep. <laughs> the whole ticket is it's all skill building. From, from everything we simply do from the time we get up. In the morning, we build, our whole life is built on that. Your strong suits, go, you lean on your strengths and fix your weaknesses. Tom, finish it up, anything for us? No, that's it guys, uh, just, you know, really little thing. Appreciate the point of attack, get the obvious stuff, have fun. That's the main thing, have fun, have a great season. Remember commitment, uh, consistency and communication are your keys to success. Good luck, guys. Have a great season. Have a great season.